as a cinematographer and editor. Um, and 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 yeah, that's me. I've been doing this since 2012, working freelance, and I've worked with. I've been blessed enough to work with some really amazing people, uh, mainly in the music and commercial industries. So I've done music videos for Paloma Faith, Feeder, Liam Payne, big music acts like that, and I've also done commercial projects for like Little Woods and Pretty Little Thing and sort of large fashion brands, and also TV and drama as well. We just um, boxing off a TV pilot at the moment, which is going to be a six part, hopefully for Channel 4 at the moment. So I uh, keep my feelers in lots of pies and met, met lots of different type of people, been in lots of different types of environments, sort of basic, you know, standard film sets as well as smaller like indie crews as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys because there's, there's, a, there's a lot to go through really. There's a lot I can mention from um, Film Buddy and what we've learned so far and what, what we can go on and talk about for, for the future as well. Wonderful. That's great. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, again, much, certainly you, both of you, much more kind of interesting than me with my kind of tenuous link. Um, so it'd be great to kind of hear more about your stories as well. So I just thought to get us started and just to see if the, can we see that? Have we got a bit of a, an animation on here? Yeah. Uh, so summer, I was just uh, showing some of this before we before we let kind of everyone in and before we started. So summer was trying to kind of work out who it was and maybe what film it was from. So that, you know, yeah, maybe you want to have a go at that in the chat, but just to see if the chat's working and just to kind of uh, check you can all hear us and stuff and you're engaged with us. Um, we just wanted to know maybe what you kind of currently know about the, the state of the, uh, the kind of industry, so the film, TV, kind of creative media <laughs> industry at the minute. So just a bit of a, I suppose, a bit, little bit of a um, test to see, have you been kind of keeping up to date with what's kind of happening? Um, so yeah, do you want to kind of use the chat and just kind of let us know folks? Um, and it might, you know, you might be, you know, don't worry if you don't know anything too specific, you might just want to say, oh, actually the reason I'm joining this session is to kind of, you know, bring myself up to speed. You know, that's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no, there's no uh, right or wrong questions really. I mean, uh, the questions because what, what I found from, uh, because obviously at Film Buddy we've got students from around the country, so we're working with universities from um, just covering all four corners of the UK, and we're actually mm -hmm. moving, and we were just talking about creating like a placement program in different countries as well to facilitate um, um, sort of like country swaps for people and stuff to get experience of different industries as well. Um, but yeah, there's, we have people of all different backgrounds, and mm -hmm. sometimes the most simple questions are, are the easiest ones to answer, mm -hmm. you know, so any, anything like that we, we can touch upon. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So mm -hmm. I've just uh, I've just met I've just put something in the chat. So I know that it's kind of opening back up as well. So the you know again with lockdown and things are starting to kind of open back up. Yeah, well, um, what we're hearing from from people on the pro film sessions mm -hmm. is uh, September seems to be when Hollywood and and all the broad main major broadcasters are are starting again. So it does seem like we've got a bit of a curfew now. Obviously, it's a difficult <laughs> it's a very difficult world we live in. But um, I, I think things are going to be running back in September, and we've yeah. spoken a few times about the possibility of um, essentially all the a lot of the jobs that have been you know lost over lockdown um, are essentially pushed just pushed back. So uh, I've got a feeling like come uh, August September time, the, the people that push back all the jobs that that's going to create this kind of a like mixing pot, and it's going to be oh I can't do that I've double booked myself and. I'm hoping that this is going to be an in for a lot of young people, whereas they can essentially take control of this bit of a bit of carnage when things start working again to get those one, two, three, let's say, broadcast credits. So then you can go on into your career. So I think that's um, I, th I, th I think that's a major possibility. So I think moving forward, I think it's I think it's looking okay now. It was very very bleak uh, a month yeah. or two ago when nobody had anything nice to say about uh, you know it's never going to start you know everyone was sort of really feeling it but it's um yeah certainly the covid thing seems to be they're slowly coming to a halt now well that's great yeah thanks matt for that update that's that's really positive i think some yeah. positive messages in there and, and hopefully that you know will kind of there will be opportunities there and that yeah. that kind of mirrors what when i joined the screen skills panel as well that's the kind of yeah. similar messages coming out of there so that's that's kind of good to hear really good to hear um i think we've got a couple of um we've got a couple of questions already 
uh, Summer in the chat. It's kind of yeah. Popped up. yeah. So um, Holly has asked if we've got any stories around getting first commissions, job opportunities, as she's just about to finish her yeah. sound design masters. Sound design. Well, we've um, just just for sound designers, we've had loads of really great sound post people and um, composers on Film Buddy. And essentially, these these people they're all working um, over a wire, you know, um, over COVID, and they're sending samples to each other to create music and do post sound and stuff for people. So those industries are actually still going on. So it's quite a positive industry to be in. Any post production um, sector is um, good 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 to be in at, at the moment. Um, sorry, I went on a tangent there. What was the question? Sorry. Um, it's about kind of first commissions, getting first you from commission. in the door. Yeah. Well. So these these pro film sessions, and I was just speaking with Ben about this earlier. Um, one way you can use them is is obviously it's a networking opportunity. And I, I've been a, a film student myself, and the question I always asked was the same: is how do you meet the people? How do you? Um, everyone says it's not what you know, it's who you know, which is absolutely true. But how do you meet these people? Well, you can meet them through Film Buddy. You can log into these sessions, and it might not be a special. You know, it might be a cinematographer. You might be a sound designer. But it's all just uh, increasing your creative language and allowing you to understand the industry a bit better. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, use these pro film sessions to network and speak to people, and that's how you get your first commission. It's meeting that one person who sees a, you know, sees a sparkle in your eye, who sees uh, some, you know, some raw talent and wants to help. But another thing that's worth adding as well, this is kind of a bit more generic and there's lots of things like this I can touch upon, but um, it, the, the main thing we find from these employers is uh, soft skills are actually the, the most important mm -hmm. thing. So, because obviously on a film set, you might be working together for six months in really close proximity. And obviously with COVID on top of that as well, people want to work with people that they like and um, don't be scared of transferable skills as well. So. We were speaking with um, a lady who does um, who was a production designer, and um, she's done some um, some amazing films. We actually spoke to uh, Paul Inglis, who's the production designer for Game of Thrones, and uh, and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it seems unanimous that for, for, for especially for industries like that, um, having other backgrounds mm -hmm. in like you might be a painter you might be able to play guitar whatever or others there are a hell of a lot of skills that are useful on set and it's more about oh. who you are as a person and how you promote yourself and putting yourself in a position where you can have networking opportunities just like this really like i mentioned obviously sarah's worked in the film industry so you guys at leeds beckett send send us some scripts <clears throat> collab together obviously if you're happy with that sorry i said your name sarah it's summer sorry <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, staying in touch with people is really important. Um, but yeah, getting those first commissions is, is, is more about the networking process than there being yeah. a you know an easy channel in, if that makes sense. That's that's uh, that's brilliant, Matt. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you touched upon that um, as well. It, again, it was a theme that came through the screen skills session that I joined as well, um, and it it's it, it's also a wider point that. Um, well, Summer and myself, you know, we ran a session yesterday, um, but we've been running sessions all this week. Uh, and the importance of the importance of networking and building relationships with people is actually it's how you it's how you develop opportunities, not just in the film and TV world, uh, but all in, in 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 the whole world in terms of jobs and opportunities. It's such a powerful aspect, um, and it's you know, and it it and, and you know we're we're really um, helping you know uh, our students kind of understand that and 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 not been afraid to ask and and, and start to build and, and understand people hear their stories and again you just you spark that interest that can lead in in a number of different directions it's it is in it's so it's so powerful and i think yeah it's great that actually you're looking to kind of enter the industry um yeah like you say it, the, the networking piece you're starting to build you're starting to kind of get your name out there uh, and you and you also touched upon there, which I think is those transferable skills. Those what you know what might be classed as softer skills, but they are they're essential, yeah. vital, <clears throat> invaluable skills um, as well. This um, this is certainly something people don't realise. I think, ben, yeah. especially for <clears throat> art directors, um, production designers. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. 
these these people ha wear many hats. Uh, obviously, you might be an art director, that might be a title, but you might be a sculptor one day, a painter the, ne painter the next day. And uh, I offered this, um, <clears throat> the, I can't remember the, the host name at, at press, but I, I, I offered the example of you've got two CVs. One of them, um, somebody's worked as a trainee art director type of person who's always a floor runner in that department before. And another person doesn't have any experience on a film set, but um, has got um, um, trained, a trained um, bodyguard and, um, and had a full driving license and worked as a courier for, for X years. Yeah. And I said, those two CVs, which would you pick? And said, the bodyguard, absolutely, because... You know, you know they're going to be strong. They're going to be able to pick pick up big pits, you know, big pits of set, move them around, etc. So, and obviously being able to drive and being confident to handle cash, you know, uh, and being able to handle yourself. Though those are all things that are valid just for that one specific role. So it's thinking outside of the box, really. And yeah. if, if there are anyone on, if if anyone's on here with specific like technical abilities, like camera and post production, that I've got slightly different entry points into the industry. Feel free to fire some questions over about that as well. Yeah, thanks for touching upon that, Matt. It's again something that came through that screen school session. You know, the, the the one of the key messages was, you know, use our learning never stops. You know, just because you've yeah. been to university, you've got a degree, doesn't mean that then you've got a ticket into industry. We've we've all we all know now. Every single one of us needs to be able to um, manage our own careers and continue to learn and develop and upskill. And and what they said was as well, they were like, look upskill yourself things like excel as boring as excel might be but an invaluable skill design digital video tutorials so yeah. you know if you i think as well if you can show that you're being proactive you, you you've got these kind of in-demand skills um and 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 that in combination with your degree skills and maybe some other experiences that you've got you've got a powerful package there to offer people um, so it, it's you know yeah a flyer person or working behind the bar, you know, it, it proves you can handle cash. It proves you can stand out in the freezing cold. And it sounds really obvious and it sounds like something a careers person would sit and tell you, but I'm only doing it because it's true. It's these, um, cause I've done it before when you're filling out your CV, oh, best not tell them about that. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Obviously, if you're going for a job in post-production, it doesn't matter if you've worked in a bar particularly, but um, you know, if you're working as a runner, then, uh, or you know, you've been a flyer person while you were at uni. That's actually a great experience because it's kind of the same thing. Because yeah. there's a lot of standing around and a lot of passing people stuff. You know, it's basically the same job. Yeah, yeah, and it's just understanding that, isn't it? And how you frame it, and and actually, it's tran it is it's the key word is transferable, and that's something that we all, every single one of us, has developed skills, and they're with us, and we can take them into new and different opportunities, and and you know see that as a huge positive see that give it gives you that flexibility don't see that as a oh that doesn't fit into that box you know again it's not a linear process i'll always talk about this on every session i run it's non-linear it's chaotic it's it's you know there's so many variables involved and you've got to kind of you know put yourself out there and let the kind of magic happen essentially Absolutely. And another thing we've, we've, we've noticed with film buddy as well is just worth mentioning that I, I get the feeling that um, just, just being kind of open about this, right guys, I, I get the feeling that uh, there's kind of like two, two barriers to pass to get that job that everyone here wants. And the first barrier barrier is, is, is um, it, it's similar to coming into adulthood in a way. It's knowing that you've got somewhere to live, knowing that you've got bills to pay, knowing that you've got a car and enough money to put fuel in it. Um, it's getting over that hurdle just as a human out, out of university. That's the first one you need to get through. So this is this is why it's so challenging because essentially you guys out there need to earn money. You need to survive um, to be able to even begin to put your foot on the ladder. And that's probably I'm a dad, so I'm probably dad in here a bit now. But that, that is such a it, it's it's a very simple, but it's a really important point to touch on. It's your foundation as a person, and you need to remember that. Um, pretty much all the roles in the creative industries are either for incredibly creative or incredibly technical or both, you know, minds. And these these people that, you know, I mean, yesterday I was speaking to Cy Bell, who, who was uh, the DOP for um, Peaky Blinders. And he, it was, uh, he's just a creative guy. He's no different to me. He's no different to you, Ben. <clears throat> he's, he's just a creative guy. And and I, and I believe when you, when you start out and say, I want to be a filmmaker, essentially you're going on a creative journey which starts with nothing and hopefully it ends with something. And it's kind of very challenging linear process of, it's, yeah, so so 
be really wary of your foundations, be wary of where you choose to base yourself. Uh, I could talk about this all day, but there's a whole north, south divide, Leeds, Manchester, and down to London. That's really important too. And taking taking the very start of the career and, and your personal life into consideration now helps you to continue to top up who you are as a creative person across the years. It's like once you get past the point where, you know, I'm making enough money now, I can pay my bills, I've got the odd job in the film industry, I'm doing okay. And then there's this, what, for, what film buddy is essentially good for is that second part, which is like, I've already got this ability now and I need to make that jump into getting regular work at 450 quid a day or whatever it might be for your role of specialism. So essentially we're teaching you the techniques of somebody higher up in their career to help you make the right decisions at the very, very, very start, if that makes sense. So um, I might have waffled there, but just stuff something to think about. For you. No, that that's some great stuff in there, Matt. Some really good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's uh, about your career simply. I think, guys, just think about it, the, the absolute starting point. And because if you get that right, you, you do get more opportunities open up to you because people see that you've got a clear path. And that's quite important to him, him, just employers in general, not just in the film industry. Yeah, I think what I think just to um, succinctly summarise it, Matt. I think what you said was, you basically build. That's what you're doing. You're building it. You put the foundations in place. You're building step by step. And because people are involved as well, that's the powerful aspect. The people are they control everything, don't they? They control decisions. They control whether they get back to you. They control what they see in you and who they can introduce you to. So again, I think it, 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 it you know, and and so many things can happen but it's about building on the majority of my uh, work in the music industry comes from one the source is one person i met him on on a different set sort of six or seven years ago <clears throat> i didn't know him he was a new face to me a nice guy and i just stayed in touch with him every now and then dropped him a message on facebook hey mate how are you doing what have you been up to or <clears throat> if i noticed he posts a new video i'll be like great video you know just stay in touch with this guy and he, over the years he became a friend and the first job he actually got from me was um, working as lead cinematographer for Five Seconds of Summer, Young Blood, which was like, a, I can't remember if it was last year or year before, but it was like the biggest track of the summer and it had like 200 million views on YouTube. So uh, that that is uh, that is the kind of, like, that has been a jewel to me because I can then use that to go on and get other work. But essentially, I got that through badgering this guy and I'm not... I'm not going to condone people doing that because I actually think that's wrong. But with, with me and him, it was you know it was a friendly thing. I wouldn't I wouldn't say badger people, but make friends with people and be interested in the work they do. Because yeah. one one thing we've we know from everyone. I mean, uh, Paul Paul Inglis, who was a production designer for Game of Thrones. We've had Jamie Harcourt, who's a legendary kind of BSC associate uh, cinematographer, who's worked on Star Wars, Blade Runner. Uh, we've we've had the production designer from Blade Runner as well. Uh, all, all these people seem to, they all love what they do and that's why they do it in the same way all the, all the guy, all you, all you people here want to do it too because they love what they do. And and people love to be asked, you know, if, if you've seen a film you really like on Vimeo or Staff Pick or whatever, you send them a message saying, yeah, I really love that film. Like somebody like me on the other side of the computer will read that and it'll mean something to them. And there's no reason why you can't build relationships and friends with people just out of the goodness of your heart. You're not looking for a job. You just want to build relationships with people. You're just saying hello. You can tell them what you do for a living, but that's not really the point. It's meeting these people and it only takes one person to, yeah. to screw up and then you're carried with yeah. them, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, Matt, you've just touched upon something that Summer and I talked about yesterday when we did a, a session about yeah you know you going out there to find people's stories so you you know you're showing some in, you're doing some research on someone showing some interest um but it it, it it it's it becomes conversational it starts off you know you're not asking them for something very specific you're just showing some interest and then that in itself can open up an opportunity to you know maybe ask a question you know, oh what would someone like me need to do to kind of you know follow in your footsteps and you never know where that then could spark to and i think that's yeah. such an important point to make and you've kind of brought that to life and it the and it's nice. scenario is confidence you're going to build yeah. more confidence by doing it yes but that is what students don't seem to have and, and i don't mean to you know generalize but it's having the confidence to ask a stupid question and i, I keep reminding the students of film buddy and it'd be great to get you guys on we've got some great sessions coming up you should have a look at filmbuddy.uk uh, but, but a lot of these people are, are employers 
and and you know if 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 you like them, speak with them. And can I send you a CV? And and uh, me, Ben, everybody at Film Buddy will always uh, facilitate to send your CV to these people. And we've 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 allowed communications and obviously placements as activity as well. But over the COVID times, we, we, we've 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 had. 10 or 20 CVs gone off to Hollywood producers, people in LA. And we had Robert Bernacki, who he, um, he he's the executive producer at Showtime, you know, the uh, network in America. It's run by Warner Brothers. And we had somebody send a CV to him. And I mean, that that's that in itself is career starting. And you know what? If you wrote a funny CV and you, you came across as a bit of a nice person, friendly person to talk to, you know, you might become friends with that person, a bit of a pen pal with this random producer, and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It all all depends on what you want to do, but that confidence is key. You need to focus. We need to focus on that confidence, and that is something that I honestly believe that comes through these film buddy sessions because it, it's allowing you speak and see so many people. It just becomes white noise, and you, and you start knowing what to say and what you want from them. I don't know. I don't know if anyone on there has a microphone on it and can speak, but. Have any of you guys ever had an like an external, you know, somebody like me coming to university, and you you know you just can't think of a question to ask them, and um, that that seems to happen quite a lot. Does that happen to anybody? Oh, do you want to? Yeah, if you want to use the chat, folks, just um, or yeah. somebody, do you want to post that in a in the chat just as a a little prompt? Yeah, because we do we do, um, Mark. You know, we as a university, irrespective of what what course you might be studying film school well the film school loads of of, of guest uh speakers industry employers come in all yeah. the time and and yeah it's and i've been in those sessions as well and it's something i always talk to students about and i i notice it that students are reluctant to uh to, to speak up to ask a question to put themselves what in front you of that person yourself, guys you're at university and you're paying for that and you're surrounded with resources ben summer all the technical team at Leeds Beckett, me at me and everyone at Film Buddy were resources for you to use, and you must see it like that way, and you must speak to these people, and you must have questions to ask because if you're not if you don't have a question, that's because mm -hmm. you don't you, you're not aware of what answers you want, and if you don't know what answers you yeah. want, you don't know what career what you want yet, and it's being able to ask questions is essentially the first step of understanding what it is you want to do, yeah, and um, so that is it's 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 super important. And it's, I, I think it can be it can be I think the confidence thing can be quite it can be daunting as well Matt I think if you're yeah, absolutely. if you're in a, if you're in a pretty large course as well and that you know there is there's someone from industry so that can be quite fearful as well for students but also I think being being the one that builds up the courage to maybe ask a question because you might think again oh oh that's a it's a silly question I don't want to kind of embarrass my embarrass myself in front of my peers but but the confidence thing is yeah, you've hit that nail on the head. I think it, but the way to address that is you've got to you've got to do things and put yourself out there. And like you said, the worst that can happen is by doing that stuff, you do become more confident because you build that. Absolutely, you, know, yeah. you, you build you build on it. So it's yeah. Thank you for kind of bringing that up. Um, I think Tom Tom's mentioned in the chat. So Tom has done that quite frequently. Um, yeah, and he kind of recognises the confidence thing. And Holly here as well. So yeah, Holly said yeah, definitely experienced this. Tended to talk, believe it was a sound mixer designer, but was lost yeah. for words at the end of the session in awe of their confidence and making yeah, their way through the ups and downs. Uh, of the, yeah. Today, Holly. And also, uh, t t Thomas for saying it's um, confidence related. It absolutely is confidence related, but I, I don't really, obviously, I've done this a long time, so confidence to me kind of doesn't exist anymore. So you, you can all tell me I'm wrong. But for me, confidence comes with understanding who you are as a person and what you want to do with your life. You know, that's kind of where you are for me anyway. And and those are two very, very difficult things. I mean, you, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, you're in university, and let's say in a new city or even a new country. And um, and all of a sudden you, you're asking these questions about what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And the, 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 the only time you'll ask you the question, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? And it means something to you is when you need to do something just for like financial reasons and stuff. But so being a student is super hard. But in terms of the confidence thing, it's less so about being a confidence person and more so about just understanding who you are and what exactly you want to do. The film industry is full of 
really amazing, colourful, bright, vibrant people who do all sorts. The I, I love, I know I keep for some reason keep going on about the art directors today, but they just seem like such a lovely bunch. And um, obviously, me as a camera editing person, it's it's a department I don't really have much to do with, but they're so fun. And you know, you nip into a hardware shop to buy some props. You're testing stuff out. You're painting stuff. You're gluing stuff to walls. And there's pressure. There's all this, but. It's, it's a real fun job and <clears throat> there, there is a job for everyone on these film sets you just need to know an, enough about the set life and what the different departments do and all this just to start to start to get the confidence to say right i want to be this i want to be an editor i want to be a cinematographer yeah um, yeah because so i think it's matt as well i think it you know something practical students could do as well you know if you know that you're going to be getting someone coming in and speaking to you you can um you can do your research on them in advance you can you can find something interesting about that individual and that's going to give you an opportunity to think about questions you might want to ask but even even if there isn't a question to ask there's nothing stopping you going up at the end and just thanking them for their time like that is such a powerful thing to do if they're a guest if they're a guest and they've been and given their time to come in and, and work with you or, or or talk to you just by you know going up and thanking them, that creates a profound impression. And also, we've now got the opportunity to follow up digitally as well. So you can do it, you know, you can do it after the event. You know, you could you could you could message them and just explain how beneficial it was and how insightful it was. Because it also listening to industry professionals and what they do, it it you know you're getting some real insight for you to help you decide whether you know certain part of the industry might be right for you. So. There's always, always, always something to learn, and you can always the, the easy, you know, the easiest thing in the world is to thank someone, but it's also one of the most powerful things as well. I, I think the simplest questions as well are ones such as, um, "Do you like your job?" You know, that that to me is the best question yeah. anyone could ask, because that is the question of somebody who understands how jobs work. Because the film industry it seems like fun, but it isn't fun. It's it's awful. A lot of the time, it's awful. You work in long days. You're getting paid less than what you want, trying to get your career opened up. And I bet, you know, if I was at the point where I was working every day over the summer and in a grand day on a big shoot, which I'm not, by the way, but if I was, you know, I'd still have things to complain about because that's just how a kind of life works. And it's, um, yeah, it, it's really tough at the start, but I, I do feel that what well, a film buddy, we get such a mix of people as well. And we have some students dipping out, like dipping in and out. So for instance, we had a, uh, Johnny Depp's personal makeup artist the other day and I know nothing about makeup to just to be blunt about it and um we had a few makeup students in there that obviously could ask great like obviously very makeup specific questions and uh, I, I we had a few composers in there and a few uh, cinematography students and um, I was really looking forward to see what questions they'd ask because all those departments liaise with makeup on a film set so I'm thinking any question is a good one. So just by saying to a makeup artist, how do you how do you liaise with the camera team? Or, or have you got any, is there any terminology you might use that a camera person wouldn't understand? Kind of thinking outside the box when people are talking to make it relevant about you and relevant about what you want to do. And, and that's how you can make the most out of sessions like, like this. Um, yeah, sorry, I might yeah. have lost that. No, 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 totally. I think, again, don't overthink it. Um, yeah, exactly. I think that's what you're saying there. You know, real simple questions, but they can be such a catalyst that builds that rapport and that relationship. And I think again, it it's just not been afraid to do that. Don't you know? There isn't any such thing as a silly question. Um, again, what the worst that can happen is, as Matt said, you you start to build some confidence. You fit, you get more you know opportunity to be courageous, um, and that's and that's something that we we develop through experience by doing, but we've got to do it. So. And, yeah. and and always think to yourself if you don't if you don't ask if you don't do it it's always going to be a no yeah so and again it, it by doing it you also are giving yourself a chance to create your own luck and opportunities um, as well so it, it's it's a really powerful thing um Absolutely, yeah. good stuff yeah and we've touched upon a lot so far Matt. we've whizzed through we're, we're, we're over kind of halfway through which has been fantastic i just wondered if <laughs> um, do you want to say a little bit more now about about film buddy i know you've you've mentioned you've weaved some film buddy stuff in there but yeah. you know you you as a, as a as a film buddy organization you know you were prior to the lockdown um yeah you know kind of operating and, and facilitating opportunities for students and then suddenly covid hit and then 
you managed to move online so fast and then the the range of sessions that you now deliver online it, it kind of knocked me off my feet i was like wow this is this is unbelievable um you know some of the some of the sessions that you were that you're offering out to students and, and i think there was one that certainly caught my eye and it wasn't particularly um film tv specific but it was the vice president of branding i think for coca-cola uh, over in new york and i was like oh wow yeah. wow we've had graphic designers from new york we've had um we had a, an ad who um was the assistant director on you know on uh, batman uh, the dark knight oh yeah yeah they had to corn and off basically Times Square or whatever it is in New York, and this is the guy who was in charge of that. And wow, you know, you can't ask him a silly question because he's just he's a New Yorker. He's like, he'll just, <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant. It's people from all walks of life, all genders, all races. It, we were trying, we were trying to push equality as well on film buddy, and we're trying to help BAME people. We're trying to help people of any background as well. But but yeah, it's um. These sessions, I, I I love these sessions, and it's a real joy to host them. So just so you know how they work, so I've I've been the kind of resident host, and um of these sessions, and to just had a bit of kind of going throughout them, and I like to kind of recap what other people have said. So rather than it being a, a lesson, a tutorial, I, I like to see these treasures essentially, as, as, you know, all buddies were just kind of stacking this knowledge on top, on top, on top. And um, um, so, yeah, I, we've, we've had some amazing sessions. We've had, um, so we've got here, you can see Jamie Harcourt, who was, who was coming up on Game of Thrones. He was actually the um, uh, clapper loader on the first Star Wars film, A New Hope, the very first one in the 70s. Uh, so he's a, an elderly chap, but he had some, he, you know, I could have spoken to him just personally for, for two hours and picked his brains on things and, and we do have, um, like we've had also, we've had uh, like so directors that worked on Marvel stuff and, and that type of thing. And, you know, sometimes we get people just asking nerdy questions, like we had a lad once just saying, oh, you know that makeup bit in, in that Star Trek film? Was it CG or was it, you know, just movie buff questions like that? Which I think is quite nice as well, because, you know, these people we're speaking to, for instance, Jamie Harcourt, he he was responsible for filming the uh, the fire for the dragons um for the final season so they, 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 they i thought this was really interesting tell me if you think it's boring but they shot practical fire effects to add to a cgi dragon i thought that was quite cool way of doing it so he was in charge of shooting the fire so when you've watched the pinnacle of what is it season seven last season of game of thrones and you see the dragon destroying um king's landing or whatever he did that it's um, amazing and and People, these people from all walks of life. We've had like young directors, like we've had Chris Foggin, who directed a film called uh, *Fisherman's Friend* last year, uh, and uh, which was like a big um, theatrical release, and that was his first major hit. We've also had um, um, sadly I can't remember her name now, but we've had a, a an ex Northern Film School student who, um, through placement um, provided by a film buddy and through interacting with the service she's now uh, on the next Jurassic Park set Jurassic Park Dominion um so it was great to her because essentially she's a graduate of two years and within that two year time and with this one placement from film buddy she's gone on to be I believe she's second AD on on that Jurassic Park set which is amazing and just within two years so I mean you guys need to think, and again, tell me because I go a bit dad sometimes with this stuff. But within two years of graduating, a lot of you guys need to get a driving license because you just do, you know, and, and that, that that can take time, can't it? So I think she were quite special for it to happen in two years, but it does happen. But we do find um, through these sessions that the, 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 the people that do well are the people that care about it. These professionals we speak to really care about what we do. So, I mean, we've had two makeup artists that's work, that have worked on Pirates of the Caribbean. So um, the, the key makeup artist, and uh, prosthetic makeup artist, and, and Johnny Depp's personal makeup artist. And um, you know what? They're both completely different people with completely different ways of working, but both working on the same or similar, very, very similar film sets. Um, but what we found is um, people from different sets, different walks of life, all these sets kind of work the same, but they work very differently. There's a different vibe on each of them. And there's a different vibe from an indie production to something like Pirates. 
and and I think it's unquestionable how important it is to get that rounded understanding for these huge pictures that are kind of beyond fathoming, you know, just just in the minds and these smaller like indie things, more like what what we what we do or when when we've just left uni, you might work on an indie picture. And um, yeah, it's nice to get that rounded example, and I believe that's what what we get through it. And I was chatting to Ben earlier, and we were saying, you know, we do give opportunities for students to send the CVs and have communication with these people as well. Uh, we had, um, and uh, yeah, there we go. This is the members area. <laughs> Look at this. This is good. I, I built the website, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's um, so so. Here we've got the um, we've got the one on one mentoring. So uh, with, um, our mentors at Film Buddy can mm-hmm. help you from any kind of specialism. I would f- facilitate you to book in one-on-one mentoring sessions. You know, if you just wanted to talk through something, mm-hmm. if you needed help with your CV, you need help, you might just want a bit of career advice. Mm-hmm. Um, you might, because I'm, I'm quite technical, you might you might have some, something might have gone wrong with a computer and you might just have nowhere else to go. And um, yeah, our mentors are, are all there for you to to kind of help just in any way we can. We'll always say if we can't, but we'll, we'll help any way we can. So yeah, we offer the one-on-one mentoring service. We've obviously got these great sessions that are, that, that that have been um, absolutely brilliant. If you guys get a chance, if you go to filmbuddy.uk, have a look at previous and an events page. Have a look at the previous events uh, we've put on because there's been um, such a mix of people, not just mm-hmm. from film, but from the creative media industries as well. Yeah. You mentioned the graphic designer from Coca Cola, and we've also had uh, international artist Ian Berry, who um, it was it was just he's, he's had his artwork hung all around the world, and uh, you know really aspiring creative guy. Um, so a real mixing pot of people. And we've got the forum as well, which is something we're really wanting to push and expand. And we're wanting to get students to engage with it. It's not quite happening yet, to be honest. It's something we're, we're trying to find a mo- an easier way of, of making that work. But we've got this, um, um, we've got communication with different countries all around the world and different students. We're starting to um, start look into signing up film buddies in, in, in Spain and in, over, over in the States as well. So we're hoping the forum will end up being a, a cross-platform place where students can talk amongst themselves between different universities, different countries. You can use it to facilitate and arrange teams for your uni work, or you can use it to meet friends or gain experience or ask questions. So that they're the they're the main services we offer at this time. I don't know if I skirted over anything then, Ben. <laughs> no, that was that. That's yes, yeah, such a such a rich, wide kind of ranging offering, um, Martin. You know, the, the kind of global arm and. The opportunities for students to look back at some of the, the 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 you know the the, the session the, those sessions wouldn't have happened would they if we hadn't have yeah. you know, the idea of flying the the Coca Cola guy what uh, to the I suppose you could have streamed it before lockdown but I think it's opened up those opportunities to really tune in and, and provided um, such a rich opportunity for students as well and I, and we were chatting before weren't we as well on the phone about you know given that things have been kind of locked down things are opening up now and and what can students be doing to continue their professional, again, the importance of continuing yeah. professional development. So tuning in to some of the um, fantastic webinars and sessions that are happening as well is going to demonstrate that you are, that you are really curious and interested about the industry because you're, you're evidencing it by being proactive and you're keeping yourself up to date. Yeah. And so it's such an important thing to do. Yeah, I, I, this is something I, I feel really strongly about, Ben, and I feel practice is really important. Obviously, COVID has taken a lot away from us, and you know, not not just in terms of career, just in general. But practice is really important. Getting a getting a CV is really important. Obviously, getting a show reel is really important. Obviously, I'm, I need to speak kind of generally because you guys might be wanting to be in different specialisms and stuff. But for instance, if you're a camera person and you don't have a camera, shoot on your phone. If you're an editor. And obviously, you need a computer. You can't can't get around that. But um, you find yourself work and find yourself things to do. So, for instance, uh, I did a post production session with Film Buddy, and I got a um, a music video, a, a properly commissioned music video for BMG Records for an artist called Twinny, who who was uh, Phoenix McQueen in Hollyoaks. If that means anything mm-hmm. to anyone. And uh, obviously, th- this was a job I picked up through lockdown, and there was no original footage. It was entirely, sh- it was entirely edited with um, uh, royalty-free, you know, no copyright footage. And um, so I gave these rushes to the film film buddy students, and I'd like make a music video out of that. I've just done it. 
know, on, a, on a real commission for a real record label, that there's absolutely no reason why you can't use the same footage. It's got no copyright attached to it and just try it out. Um, music videos are, are a great thing to do, by the way, because, I mean, you could do a performance piece through Zoom and then film a narrative piece at home. So I think music videos are a really good way for cinematographers and, and young editors to practice and directors. Um, but, yeah, pr practice is really important. And, and phones nowadays take a really great image as well. And it just mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's allowing you to just for facilitate I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just talking really broad because I don't know what um, any of the students in here kind of wanting to do. Um, but if you know if you want to direct, you can still direct things now. You can still be writing, you can still be shooting, and you can still be editing. And I found that when I was a film student, I couldn't practice editing because I didn't have any footage. And when you work in student teams, sometimes the footage you get isn't the greatest. Or that's what it was like for me, not speaking for Northern Film School. But um, but yeah, so I found it really tough to like practice. Um, but now the work comes in, I get more practice, I get better what I do, and then and that's kind of where the money comes from. That's kind of how it works. So any excuse, any, I mean, I was speaking to a student the other day and she was, she n really nervously told me that she made fan videos and um, and she was like laughing and she was really embarrassed about it. And I said, oh, there's no need to be embarrassed about it because I don't know if any of you guys are into this stuff, but it, it, these fan videos, you know, you might you, you take a film and you, you trim it down into a trailer. The, these are the, 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 it's essentially doing that is the only way you can teach yourself narrative, uh, editing for narrative or editing for story with no money and no kit. It's the only way you can do it. So I said, no, oh, that's absolutely brilliant. That's absolutely relevant because you're showing me that you can use effects and you can cut to story. That's brilliant. So any kind of um, personal specialisms, you know, things you're interested in, TV, LGBT community, anything like that, you, you can use film as a, as a, mm -hmm. as a medium, just, uh, you know, obviously uh, to facilitate practice and, you know, include it with what you're into, make it about you. And uh, we had, um, we had a, a producer called Deva on once who's an indie filmmaker which I love hearing from indie filmmakers because they're the people essentially, fingers crossed, that say five, ten years ahead in the career from some of you people. And it's, so it's interesting that they're kind of in that midway point. And she kept talking about the idea of being a purple cow, which is like a business phrase and just about standing out and being different. So all her films and her website and how she promoted herself, she, she didn't want to look like anyone else. She wanted to look special. And that was her whole kind of model. And the, the kind of phrase that's been coined off a few of these people is creative foundation. And um, that is something that's kind of shown online through your social media and your website and stuff. But it's it's for an employer or for another creative who's looking for somebody with your ability. That foundation is really important. So uh, my foundation is obviously work, working mainly in the pop and commercial industries. So um, if I was going for a, a, a music job, I can name drop a few people and I get that job if I was going for film and TV I'd have to do it in a different way and yeah, yeah but it's starting to think about things relative like that it's, it's re re really important um but yeah I don't know if any, I don't know if I'm talking too much Ben or if anyone's got any questions no 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 it's all it's it's great stuff Matt it really is and I'm sure it's really appreciated from the students and we've yeah we've had another question actually pop in whilst you've been talking so um students said here so he had a, an issue with schedule in last year didn't get the opportunity to work on a film buddy placement so he's just asking now as a as a as a graduate so j just just kind of um, will have finished with us um can can he still um work with film buddy for placement so is there an opportunity for, you know um for, for for him there yeah just just drop drop ben an email see see what he says see what's happening i mean it's a really difficult time with covid at the moment because physical placements are really difficult and I don't know what you do Thomas I, th I think we might have met before I recognize your name at least but um but um in terms of post-production I mean I I'm doing a lot of placements at the moment just just with the job I've been getting over the lockdown period because it's simply all we can get but it will come back to normal like I said at the start in September that's when all the productions will start and I'm predicting and I hope I'm right but I obviously it's just my opinion um but I'm hoping come September there's going to be this crazy mixing pot everyone's fighting for the same work everyone's double booked themselves because the job from four months ago has just reared its head but they can't do it now because they're doing something else and um I'd just like to say as well on that I, I know a load of um 
freelance filmmakers, people that do a bit of everything, um, usually live in London or uh, like me in Manchester. And, you know, these people, um, they're not necessarily much better than you guys. Obviously, I'm not aware of your work, but I know people with really low technical ability, going out, finding jobs online, w working and living in central London, getting the odd job as a focus puller here, the odd job as a camera assistant there on these kind of smaller shoots and making good money and paying the bills. So one thing I will say, because I know Northern um, Film School uh, loves to loves to show you this kind of conventional channel for high-end broadcast and film, but I'm kind of an advocate for going out and doing it yourself as well, guys, and, and don't feel like you can't do that because those experiences will all help you get the job on the big, big film set as well. You just need to be careful how you promote yourself because if you're a generic filmmaker and you're going for a job as an assistant camera, obviously there's a very, very different role, different mind, different person. So the creative foundation, how you promote yourself is really important. But don't be don't be worried about just saying, you know what, I'm going to knock on every, maybe not nowadays with COVID, maybe not till later, but knock on every barbershop door and say, can I make a promotional film for you? It'll cost you 100 quid. You can imagine if you had five of them every week and there's a lot of barbershops out there. And it's a way you can cut your teeth and learn how to use your camera properly. And if you made it, make a mistake, you could offer a bit for free. And it's just doing anything you can to make money in those early stages. It's, it's worth saying that because it's really tough when you start out, guys. It's not just about getting the job. It, it's more so about coping with not having the job whilst you get the job, if that makes sense. I, I've been the skintest I've ever been chasing dreams in the film industry. And um, as have a, lo a lot of people and a lot of legendary people we've spoken to have been in the same situations that I've been in and certainly you guys might end up in as well so um be careful with your money don't get a credit card unless you really need one as well because that's all that's there's another tough thing it just takes so long super thanks Matt um <laughs> yeah we, we're 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 nearly towards the end yeah um yeah, Tom really likes that that kind of answer. That's great. So yeah, just in terms of, in you know now students that want to kind of sign up for Film Buddy, they're able just to you know go to Film Buddy online and, and kind of join at the minute. Is is that is is it as kind of simple as that? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go over to filmbuddy.uk and hit register, um, uh, just 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 so you know as well, we we need to approve registration. We need to check that you're from Northern Film School. So. Um, if you do register, make sure you don't do it like five minutes before a session because you might not get approval in time. But yeah, when you get a minute, um, go register over at Film Buddy. That'll register you to our newsletter and promoter. And um, so you'll get email updates about what sessions we've got going on and stuff uh, for, for the coming weeks. Um, we're about to run. Um, we've got a couple of weeks running at full capacity. And then we're going to be slowing the sessions down a bit, but we'll still be putting on a couple of sessions a week. I think we're still kind of working it out. Um, but um, and then we're, we're starting to. Um, well, I mean, we start. I don't know whether I'm allowed to say this, but we're speaking with the BSC and the ACO as well um, to get um, you know extra industry people in as well. So these would be absolutely legendary, you know, uh, yeah, high in the industry camera people essentially, um, and and people in that department. So so we're going to get some great coverage with that stuff as well come September. But yeah, please register, and then you'll get the emails about the sessions. I just have to recommend it, even if. A session isn't specifically suited to the specialism that you want to do. <clears throat> Just as a professional myself, I, I'd recommend you to, to come because you might not be aware because you don't have the knowledge of, let's say, what that role does, but this person could be an employer. It could be, it, you know, it could be relevant or you could find ways of making it relevant because, you know, if you want to be a camera person and you speak into an art director, they're not really going to give you a job, but you can be asking them questions. And I'm telling you what, the first time you're on a film set and you've got an art director, and you'll remember chatting with that person and you'll kind of get a rough vibe on how to speak to them because you've had that networking process. And hopefully if it works how we want it to, we want to, you to get the feeling like you're working on a film set, but sat in your own home on, on Zoom, you know. So, um, yeah, we'd love to see some of you guys there. Absolutely. That's that's great. Yeah. So be be really kind of be just be curious, guys. I think that's what you're saying there, Matt. You know, don't just dismiss it because it doesn't fit into a very niche box you actually might learn something really invaluable by joining one of the sessions. Phil, um, you know, the VP of branding at Coca-Cola. I mean, I'm just aware where a film, uh, you know, 30-year-old filmmaker in Manchester, and this guy, he's he was responsible for turning Coke cans red again. So he lined up the branding to make it all red with like different colour strips. And it's like that, this, so this guy, he made Coke red again. That That is 
kind of really cool that and I'm not a graphic designer, but I do use graphics when I do my films. And I was asking him questions about process and what, why you choose certain fonts. You can ask techie questions. Some people love techie questions, some people don't. But they're the questions I like being heard to ask because uh, we had composers the other day. We were talking about limiters and compressors and how to properly you know, balance and level the audio. And um, I've got sessions uh, coming up as well about me you offline how to relink stuff back in premiere or whatever it is you're using and understanding the terminology about that so it isn't just q a led practice where we do have practical sessions as well so we're putting in camera and edit in practical sessions over over the lockdown period um teaching mainly on on, on sony fs7 and, uh, um, for the camera stuff because that's what we've got available to us but yeah so we've got practical sessions as well and um, if you guys have any ideas, anything you specifically struggle with, reach out to me, reach out with Ben, and it's a bespoke service. We try and tailor it as much around the people as possible, find your happy mediums and stuff. So if there's something you want to speak about, you can book a mentoring session, and we love to get emails from people. So if you've got an idea for a session or could you get this person, nobody's done that yet, but we could certainly try. Um, you know, And yeah, just, just stay in touch and, and register and have a look at these sessions and it's really casual. We'll have, we'll have some fun. It'll be good. <laughs> so, Matt, yeah, just in terms of a Leeds Beckett, just Leeds Beckett students in general, you know, if, if they're studying, well, you know, a med- we've got a media degree, can they also sign up to Film Buddy as a, yeah. as a student? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, and the, main, the main industry we're working is obviously the film industry. But yeah. we, do, um, we, we do have channels and we are getting people from the creative media industries as well. Yeah. These two industries are very, very, we find very similar, or similar skill sets. So if yeah. you are from um, a graphic design background, mm-hmm. you know, there's still things you can learn from these people, I think. I think as well, Matt, it, it's, you know, uh, we have a lot, we've got such a rich portfolio of courses at, at Beckett that, yeah. you know, even just even in the creative arts school, it's you, it's amazing how many students want to work in the in, in the screen industries as well. You know, you might study in fine art or you might be a product designer. But again, I think those transferable skills it, and, and if they've got any interest in wanting to do that, you know, I suppose this would be a real good platform for them, you know, to, to start to build that industry awareness. Yeah, I mean, you might you might be you might be sat there listening to this and thinking, oh my god, I, I used to work as a as a bouncer at a local pub. I've I've been I've been a flyer person, and I'm, I'm a graphic designer. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I could be an art director now. Well, that sounds like fun, and it does sound like fun. That sounds like the best job to me. Art directing it sounds loads of fun. But yeah, it's, it, it's um, oh, there's a lot there's a lot of jobs out there. It's just finding them. It's just yeah. hopefully that's what we're here to help you with as well. That's great, Matt. Yeah, we're just drawing to a close here now, and that's the, the, this has been this has been incredibly insightful. Um, really has. It's you know, thank you very much for taking well, an hour out of your diary, which will be really busy um, this afternoon. And we had a few had a few hiccups, but you know, you use your technical nous, um, got yeah. you know, you downloaded Chrome, um, and you were able to join us. Um, so I, you know, I'd like to say on behalf of the career service on, on behalf of the university um you know a massive thank you uh, for joining us this afternoon yeah this session's been recorded so you know we'll be we're able to reach more students that are interested that might have you know missed out on the opportunity in terms of joining us live um and just just for those of you that, that are with us just just a plug for a session tomorrow as well uh, and i think this session tomorrow correlates incredibly nicely with what a lot of matt said um so it's all about supporting you into the creative sector um it's a session run by a graphic designer about how you can self-promote yourself so it's it's got themes around networking your online presence portfolios um so again there's a lot of transferable um insight that will be offered tomorrow that you can apply to where you're headed next so please do join us Um, and again very much you know compliment a lot of what matt's discussed this afternoon so you know, make the most of these sessions, um, you know, that they're designed for you. Um, so, yeah, again, Matt, you know, thank you very much. Um, it'd be great to get any feedback from you students as well that, that have been on with us this afternoon, um, you know, showing your appreciation for Matt. Um, any final kind of thoughts and stuff? The chat will kind of remain open when we leave. Um, so if you just want to pop some stuff in there. Um, right. and, yet, and, yeah, you know, get get involved with Film Buddy. It sounds like such a wonderful kind of uh, wonderful uh, uh, opportunity. Absolutely, I'll, 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 if it's okay with you, Ben, I'll, I'll, I'll pop my email in this box here, and 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 Ben's as well. If anyone's got any quite uh, extra questions or anything, is that all right? 
Yeah, do it. Yeah, go, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, um, I think when Matt Matt says Ben, he doesn't mean me. He means his uh, his his yeah. buddy from film buddy Ben Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> So here's, uh, I'll just pop in here, mine and Ben's email address. Any questions at all to do with film, buddy, feel free to direct them to me, to me, to me or to Ben. It's, it'd be lovely to hear from you and we'd love to see some, some of you on our session tomorrow. I should plug what we've, what we've got tomorrow. I can't remember. Do you know what, Matt? It's, I'm, I struggle to keep up. You've got so much good stuff. It's yes, amazing. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who do we have tomorrow? Let's have a look. Uh, oh, right, yeah. So the producer from Tolkien. You know, the um, um, Lord of the Rings writer. Wow. So it's um, that biopic thing. So that's going to be nice. But again, producer, this person's an employer working in major feature films. And so, you know, have, if you are coming tomorrow, have a think about what you could ask a producer. Well, what would you ask them if you could ask them anything? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Great. Great final plug there, Matt. Super. Okay, then, folks. Um, yeah, we'll call that a wrap, I think. Um, yeah, thanks again to Matt. You know, it's been brilliant, Matt. Thank you. Um, and we'll see you all soon. You're great. Nice to meet you all. We'll see you all soon. Nice to meet you.